Hi there, my name is Kay Moon, and this is a video about the full moon in Scorpio and lunar eclipse taking place on May 5th at 1.24 p.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This will be the twin flame energy update and update for the divine counterpart collective a couple quick announcements before we begin i am thrilled to be able to share with you that this saturday i am going to be hosting a live workshop about how to work with your personal manifestation blueprint it'll be here it'll be free it'll be on youtube and if you are unavailable on Saturday, May 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean, you can certainly come back and catch the recording. There's nothing you need to do to participate other than just show up and listen and have a copy of your chart in your hands. And we will work together step by step to help you understand how to manifest anything you want at any time during the year. Even though we are closing the season of hyper manifestation now, we live on the planet that represents manifestation and creatorship. We are divine creator beings incarnate, and you have the power within you to create whatever you want at any time. And I'm going to show you how to find your personal blueprint for that in your chart separate prior uh, on this in this workshop when we get together on Saturday. Now, there will be a follow-on workshop that is private next Saturday, May 13th, that I am rolling out to my private list this Thursday, and they will have early bird treats and early bird gifts for showing for signing up for that early. If you want to get access to that, what you need to do is in the description box for this video, you want to go ahead and get on my private list now. The link to sign up is below. It's a little bit.ly link and it'll take you to the page where you can jump on my private list so that you can get early access to register for the follow on manifestation, the full manifestation workshop, which will be Saturday, May 13th. But the free public workshop will be Saturday, May 6th. That's this Saturday. And I hope to see you there. All right. That was announcement number one. Announcement number two. Um, first look is in the Lightworker Energy Update. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Great to have you here. In the Lightworker Energy Update, it's published right alongside this one. You'll see it under videos on the channel. At the tail end of that video, I do something called First Look, where I share my first impressions of the next new moon or full moon happening after the one that we're going to talk about today. That is the new moon in Taurus and it'll be two weeks from now and it looks like a really good one. So we'll talk about what's happening here, but if you want the full picture uh, for the collective, have a listen to the Lightworker Energy Update and definitely listen to First Look at the end so that you have a way of knowing what's coming and how to work with the energy. And lastly, the May calendar is indeed open. And this is it, guys. This is the last of this fun season of manifestation. Uh, once we get into June, we're completely done with this hyper manifestation energy and we move into a season of grounding what we've planted in the first four months, five months of the year. So if you want to have a look at how to work with this manifestation energy one-on-one -on -one before the season closes, by all means, hit up my calendar. Certainly got time to do that with you before the end of May and before this season closes out. Let's dive into what this lunar update is bringing to the table for the Divine Counterpart Collective. I talk a lot in the Lightworker Energy Update about the full picture, which you definitely want to have a listen to before you listen to this, but the full picture has everything to do with the conversation about upgrading and moving from one state to another state, moving from one identity to another identity through the process of closing a cycle, closing a chapter in your way of being with love, with money, with health. I get into why that is and how that is and how to work with it there. But I'll just to quickly show you 
Our full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio is here. Scorpio deals with endings and completions. Full moons are monthly endings and completions. And on top of that, lunar eclipses, as my astrology teacher Nadia, sa Nadia Shah says, are lunar eclipses on steroids. So there is a lot of closing, a lot of completion energy, a lot of closing out of old cycles so that we can upgrade and move into our next chapter together collectively. And this is a very exciting period of time because just as we've spent so much time in the new, walking, 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 new, 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 at the same time, there is the old that is, it was there, but now it's coming to an end point. And so we are at the point in time where there is overlap. And that's this little season that I'm drawing trying to illustrate visually here on your screen. We're at this place where there's overlap in dimensions. There is interdimensionality that's very, very loud in our consciousness. And I talked about this in the community post that I shared about the Mercury retrograde, where you may really be seeing a bit of overlap in the old and the new and conf conflating the two as life just looking the way it always looks. It's not. This is a very different moment in time where the new is really looking for us as my coach. I talked about her previously. Her name's Romania over on Yielded Vessel Talk. She says, in order for the new to really take hold, you have to give it access. You have to give it agreement. You have to give it attention and focus so that it can solidify because otherwise your old will solidify again right in front of your eyes without you even realizing that you're the one who solidified it. You'll think it's life, but really it was you. And so here we are at this moment in time where this full moon in Scorpio lunar eclipse is fostering a growth of uh, solidifying the new, stepping into the new by closing out that which we've outgrown. And like I said, I talked about this extensively in the post I put in the community channel. Have a read over that for a bit more detail and a bit more color, but it will help you understand how to work with this energy. Okay. Um, it's especially transformative because Uranus is involved in this particular lunation and Uranus tends to bring quick change and it is the original divine counterpart. So it moves us in quantum ways. We have Juno here, the divine feminine energy sitting at that second degree of Gemini and the sign of communication and mental processes and thoughts. And she at this lunation is in speaking in harmony to Pluto. Pluto deals with power and we call the formation she's in a trine. Pluto deals with power. Pluto deals with confronting our fears. Pluto deals with control and the entirety of the resurrection cycle. So the death and the ending, the afterlife, the integration of lessons and momentum, and then the restart, the rebirth that is on the other side of it all. Pluto is in the rebirth energy having arrived in the new sign that it's going to be in for some time, that's Aquarius here. It's wrapped up its 14-year transit here in Capricorn. It's going to dip back briefly over the course of this year and a little bit of next before it fully lands in Aquarius, but it is definitively moving toward a new energy, completely new energy. And so with Pluto speaking to her, she's now in a new sign. She's in Gemini. After kicking off the year here in Aries, she sailed through Taurus. Now she's in Gemini. There's speed and momentum unfolding in our divine feminine energetic fields. So whether you identify as in the polarity of divine feminine or you identify as having both energies, divine feminine and divine masculine, which we all have. Some of us just happen to work more in one polaric than the other. And it's okay. Polarity than the other. That's okay. Sometimes there's need for that. There's purpose for that. Depending on your lessons and your leadership here with Juno in Gemini, the sign of duality, the sign of two, 
We have her coming to a completion vibrationally with certain agreements to hold her power and her fears in particular ways. We have her beginning to explore what it might mean to harness and wield more power, more truth, more of the divine light in the way that she connects with the Gemini energy, which is soul family, it's mental constructs, and it's thought and communication. How do I wield more power in those four areas? Soul family, mind, and mouth. She's also in communication here with Saturn and Pisces. Here's the Saturnian energy and what we call a square, roughly a 90 degree angle to uh, the divine feminine energy there. Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn really deals with our relationship to boundaries and structure and order and integrity, wholeness, completeness. And so Saturn making conversation with her in Gemini, Saturn does do a bit of a pattern around separating things, moving things from one season to the next. That's Saturn's original dominion is over the seasons and order and time and the movement from one season to the next. But Saturn also has a reputation for being the separator and the harsh teacher. And if you know the mythology, it's because upon his mother's request, he castrated his mother's lover because the lover was hurting her. But it's only from the male gaze that we get Saturn as the harsh teacher, the punisher, and the separator, the castrator. From the feminine gaze, Saturn gave his mother, Gaia, back her ability to be what she always was, a creator. It was her job. She just created beings to populate her body. And Saturn restored her ability to do that, restored her integrity to do so, restored her back to wholeness. And so where Saturn comes into conversation with Juno at this time, brings into our conscious awareness that which we need to separate ourselves from in order to be able to wield more of our own divine feminine light. It's coming into clarity about that which is undermining our capacity to walk in leadership in soul family so that we can actively be a part of a soul family that is evolving toward greater light and greater love. There are some things that likely with Aquarius or Pluto stands at being an air sign, Juno, where she sits as an air sign, air signs deal with communication likely some things that might need to be said at this time. There might be things that you may have withheld for an extended period of time. And now that Mercury is retrograde, you're recognizing you cannot hold your tongue any longer. You need to be honest and truthful and clear about what things are and what things aren't, where things stand for you and where things don't. And that's totally understood because what we're ultimately doing here with Saturn and Pisces is leaning into emotional alignment and congruence we're leaning into um, our own emotional boundaries um, and our own spiritual boundaries too one of the things i spoke about at the tail end of the light worker energy update was the way in which so, you know sometimes when you're in a process of evolution which we all are at this moment in time we're all moving into something very new you may find that it's quite difficult to hold close proximity with people who have a fixed idea about your identity or an attachment to you showing up a very particular way. In those moments, you may find that you need to move yourself into the cocoon like a caterpillar moving toward becoming the butterfly. The caterpillar doesn't go into the cocoon with all of his friends. Caterpillar walks in there alone. And when he comes out, he socializes with butterflies, not caterpillars. And so you may find that this may be a period of time of transformation around the soul group and soul family in terms of whom you're walking with, talking with, rocking with at this time, only because your, evolve, your evolution is unfolding in a way that's aligned for you. 
your lessons and your leadership at this time. But that doesn't mean that you can you can't walk with those people. It just means that the proximity you want shared may need to shift at this time so that you can move into being all that you were really called to be at this time. And I really go in depth about the identity shift unfolding in the light worker energy update, but it's certainly echoed here in the divine feminine energy fields. Okay. We have her in conversation with the shaman's asteroid, also in an air sign. So certainly likely some communication, some mindset shifts in the world of partnership and relationship. And the theme here is really emergence. It's a theme about coming into the lessons that you have learned and bringing them back to the tribe, bringing them back to the people you're called to lead. That may not necessarily be your soul family. That may be other people that you're here to lead, right? And so really honoring that truth where it is so for you. Um, you know, Pluto in Aquarius deals with collectives as well. So having been a part of one collective, you may find yourself stepping into a new collective at this period of time, leadership in a new role with a new group of people in one way, shape, form, or another. All of this is unfolding as the divine feminine has moved out of this season of deep purging that she went through. In the latter parts of 2023 and the rebirthing that unfolded, sorry, 2022 and the rebirthing that unfolded at the beginning of 2023, the clearing out was for the purpose of being able to hold greater light, hold greater leadership for the people she's here to work with. And now she's on a momentum track to being able to do that and facilitating and sharing those lessons and that wisdom through thought, through communication, writing, speaking, interaction and dialogue even, just with friends, with family, you may find that you're called to stand in that light and in that leadership with those around you um, or with a new group of people altogether if those around you really can't hold and or maintain your new identity, okay? It's a very mental energy. There's a lot of wisdom that's being brought forth here. We also have a sextile to Pallas here in Leo. And so you may notice that within all of this, there's a big, there's a bit of self-protective energy as well as Pallas is in Leo. Pallas is a protector and Leo is a sign that deals with our own sovereignty. And so where you have in the past felt very compromised by some of the dynamics that we have spoken about here today, this is a moment in time where your capacity to compromise is coming to a close. Your capacity to be in compromise, to negotiate your true hopes, wishes, dreams, and or desires, your true what you feel like you're truly here to do, your capacity to, to negotiate that is coming to a close, to be small for other people, to be comfortable, or to be dishonest so that other people can be comfortable, or your capacity to not shine so that other people's eyes don't hurt. This is a moment in time where in the divine feminine energy fields, we're all being invited into putting that down, releasing and letting go of those patterns of behavior and those agreements with other people. And where people can rock with you, they're going to rock. Where they can't, well, they'll probably, those relationships are going to be up for renegotiation or completion in the coming months. There is a power up energy here where there's a real determination because of the way Pluto is really impacting Juno and Saturn is too with this discipline and this focus. There is a real power up energy here in the divine feminine energy fields where it's a little bit like engine revving. Like you're hearing big, loud engines, like you need the foot on the gas, like plowing forward in a car. There's a determination to really make things happen in a more feminine way and a focus on learning from what we've been through, 
with a commitment to make a difference for other people through words, through language, through communication, messages, writing and speaking again, all of that is Gemini. There may be a little bit of hesitation and indecision in some places as Gemini represents duality. And as I mentioned, we are sitting in a moment in time where there's two worlds sitting right on top of one another. And it's really necessary to look for the new, face the new in order to solidify the new. If you keep facing and solidifying the old, you'll constantly be in this place of exhaustion because you're propping up two worlds with your life force. And so there's a real need in this to really bind yourself and attach yourself to what's new for you that you want to create and release your attachment to what's old. Let that fall away. The hesitation and indecision is a bit of the, the shadow side of Gemini, which is made manifest here by this Mercury retrograde. Um, Mercury retrograde can really bring forward some of the shadow side of Mercury, not always, but sometimes. And this shadow side of Gemini is like hesitation. It's doing nothing. Um, it's utilizing doing nothing almost intentionally just to kind of shake things, see what other people are going to do. This would be the wrong time to do nothing, um, to say nothing, to do nothing, to not act, to wait and see. All of those are traditional Gemini strategies that have a time and a place. This just isn't that moment. Um, so this is really the moment for recognizing the mirroring aspect of Gemini because Gemini has two, there's double there. There's twins, two personalities there. What you're getting is the opportunity to see the mirror of what your old thoughts and belief systems, again, that's also part of Gemini, have created. And to look and parse, I want to keep these, I want to release those. These are helping me, those are not. And to really give yourself permission to say, I choose the thoughts, I dictate the tune, therefore I dictate the dance. And if you don't like what you're seeing on the dance floor, change the music. That's a bit of how this is playing out. And there's a real power and velocity to action here in the Gemini energy for that. So it's very exciting in the divine feminine energy fields. It's just a matter of not letting yourself feel too frustrated by some of the old still manifesting and wearing itself out while the new is coming into formation here. Okay. Now, here's some more good stuff. There's a mirroring energy here in our divine masculine energy fields. And definitely if you want to talk through some of this stuff, how to work with both of them in your own chart, sign up for a private reading. We can really look at the mirroring energy here for you. You can book those over on my site at kmoonastro.com. Here's this Jupiter energy inside of Aries. Now, this Jupiter situation here is having a conversation with Eris. Now, normally when you read about the mythology of Eris, and that's her there with that circle with the down pointing arrow like that. She doesn't sound very nice. People talk about her as like chaos and discord and strife. People talk about her as like someone who like throws a wrench in the works out of spite. When you see Eris jump into action, typically there's a catalytic event. There's a reason why she behaves the way that she behaves. When Eris does all of her heiressness. <laughs> Typically it's because she has felt left out. She's she's frustrated. She's she wanted to be included but people have you know mocked or undermined or excluded her in a way that she feels was unjust and unfair. And so this is when you see heiress kind of move into her I'll teach them, you know, level best to try and like get people to pay attention to her. And so with Eris in conversation with our divine masculine energy here, 
<sighs> there's underneath all of Eris's kind of misunderstood behavior that is clearly problematic. <laughs> Um, underneath all of that is a longing and a desire to be uh, one of the crowd, one of the party, one of the group. And so what we have going on here is Jupiter speaking to Eris and all the places where we may have felt left out in our divine masculine energy, we're, we're having no more of this. We're now ready to move beyond just taking it on the chin and being passive aggressive about it. Eris is quite passive aggressive in many ways. Jupiter is now in front of her. And so we're moving beyond that as a strategy for getting what we want and what we need. And we're moving into a new season and a new timeline as Jupiter connects to the North Node and will continue to connect to the North Node. New timelines are opening up in our divine masculine energy fields, much as they did a couple weeks ago in our divine feminine fields when she spoke to Uranus and to the North Node as well. These new timelines are giving us the opportunity to solidify having what we truly desire as Drew Jupiter moves into Taurus, the sign that deals with desire, speaks with the North Node, and then fertilizes our true desires. One of the things we can learn from our own passive aggressiveness, when our own energy comes out sideways, when it's like, I didn't want that to happen, and we, you know, a little tantrum comes out. I'm just not going to respond to you, even though I see you there, or I'm just going to, oops, did I throw away your lunch? I didn't mean to. I had every intention of throwing away your lunch. Your lunch stinks. And so do you. You're a bad human. I hate you. Like when we find ourselves in these internal conflicts, right? Kind of having these, you know, passive aggressive behaviors that we laugh about later, um, but certainly can cause harm in the moment. What's really going on is that there's a thwarting of power. There's a thwarting of our own self-expression, a thwarting of our own intention. And so this meetup of Jupiter and Eris is giving us opportunity to look at where we have been in agreement with the repression and the thwarting of our truth, where we have persisted and patterns of behavior that undermine and relegate us to the to the kids' table at the holiday. Instead of stepping up and being the adult that stands for what they really want and being the adult that sits at the adult table, right? So Eris energy has a lot of divine purpose. You know, I, I like to think about her as righteous riot and righteous rage. Like she really only acts out when she's found something quite unfair. And so in the divine masculine energy fields where the divine masculine energy has taken on more than their fair share, has given more, has provided more, has gone above and beyond, has taken it all on their back all on our back. This is the moment when uh, we see ourselves go, enough, enough. I'm not doing that anymore. Pieces fall where they may. I'm not picking them up. And so all of this is challenging and uncomfortable as this is going to be because Pluto really deals again with fear, things we're afraid of. There is a real recognition with this meetup of Jupiter, Pluto, and Eris in this 90 degree angle of what we can just no longer tolerate and a move to just release it. Like, okay, yeah, I just, I can't live like that anymore. I have to move into something different. And again, I go into full detail and context in the Lightworker Energy Update, but this is a frequency that we're really deeply seeing in the divine masculine energetic fields right now, which is very much a mirror to some of what we're seeing in the divine feminine energetic fields as well, because she too is speaking with Pluto. There's endowment for power in her fields. There's motivation to change in his fields. And that's only amplified by his conversation here with Mars. 
Mars is movement, Mars is action, Mars is momentum, and that's a square energy from the sign of emotional congruence and emotional truth. And there's a sextile here from Venus over here in communication. And so during this period of time, you may have some realizations, some new thoughts. You may hear yourself say and do some things you never thought you would do like, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't really like that. I'm hanging that one up, letting that one go. I guess I don't really want it. Like you may hear the word no come out of your mouth in ways you never thought you would hear the word no. And you may hear the word no from people at this time whom you never thought you would hear no from. The important thing about this is to honor your own no and your own yes. I'll never forget in my early 20s, I'm in my mid or late 20s, I was in a workshop. Um, it was a business workshop, but there was a lot of like flirtatious energy running kind of rampant among the participants. And so, um, you know, people were flirting, some people were hooking up, you know, people were trying to figure out who they hook up with and hooking up and all the means of what hooking up can mean, right? It was all the things. And it was just one of those kind of groups where people were doing business together, but they were also having a lot of fun together outside of work too. And I remember one of the participants was like flirting with me. And at the time I was engaged to somebody else who was not in the workshop with me, but I remember one of the participants was flirting with me and I got a piece of feedback that I'll never forget. And he said to me, you know what, Kay, you could stand to learn how to give a good no, girl. Like, if you're just not interested, say so. I was like, whoa, no one had ever been that honest with me that my no was flimsy, that my disinterest wasn't clear, but it was also obvious, and that Standing in my power would really mean being honest when I'm just a no, I'm just not interested. And so in the divine masculine energetic fields, also too in the divine feminine, as we're moving into this closing out energy that's wrapping up the old so that we can fully embrace the new, one of the things that we're learning how to do is learning how to say no no, I don't want that. No, I'm not interested. No, I'm not explaining because no is a complete sentence. And there it is. <laughs> so that's some of the lesson here, but in particular in the divine masculine energetic fields at this time is learning how to give a good no. <laughs> And because when we say no to something gives us the opportunity and the space and the bandwidth and the life force and the capacity to say yes to something else, you can't be a yes to all the things all the time. If you really want certain things, there are other things you're going to have to say no to. And that's until we are in our ascended states as, you know, without these body vehicles and no longer on earth, it's kind of the way it is because the body vehicle can only hold so many things at one time. We're kind of limited by its boundaries and the way it can hold consciousness frames. So this T-square is perfecting and will continue to in the weeks to come as Mars starts to move in opposition to Pluto and a direct square here to our friend Jupiter. And so the tension is going to continue to rise for our divine masculine energetic fields. And the trick will be to not act out in heiress ways, but to just be, you know, the powerful being you are incarnate and just honor your no. Honor where things just aren't a green light for you anymore. And just trust that other adults can handle that. Um, that Mars is also giving us a lot of motivation to follow through. And attention to figure out our own internal alignment 
with our emotional reality, meaning because Mars was previously in conversation with Chiron. And so there would have been at that time, a period of time where a human masculine was looking at our human self going, but I'm not big enough to hold the power. I'm too small a human. And so in the preceding months, maybe April, maybe March, conversations internally about feeling like I'm not big, I'm not big enough for that dream. Maybe I have to aim smaller would have come up. To which I now firmly say to you, no, <laughs> that was not the lesson. The lesson was actually about how and how to really see the ways in which you were uniquely built and crafted for precisely what it is you dream. There's a uniqueness to your dreams that are that are rooted in the flavor of the ways in which you're different from everyone else out here like you. And so this Mars speaking to Chiron thing is going to move into, which is, oh, shadow side of Chiron, I'm not enough. It's going to move into Mars speaking to a Pluto thing, which is like, okay, now I will move into the warrior stance and I will take the training and I will come back anew and I will be able to hold the power. And so that's an exciting thing, but much of it is going to require a releasing of some previous identity of identification with not enoughness or smallness or being a part of this group or that group. Um, and it's, it's not, it's unironic, but that the mirroring is so loud. This is very common with the divine counterparts. The human masculine is in the sign of family. The human feminine is in the sign of soul family and both of these in the way that they're having conversation at this particular time with Jupiter um, and the way Juno has been having conversation around a lot of these things as well has really been about learning how to evolve beyond needing to be a part of the pack and stepping into instead leading the pack. Listen. If you are this far down the rabbit hole, because my channel is not, it's, it's small. Like I don't have, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers yet. You know, I don't even have more than, you know, I barely have my 25,000, right? The reality is, is if you're this far down the rabbit hole and you've listened this far into this recording, there's something different about you <laughs> here on earth. There is something unique that you are here to do because the kind of conversation I engage in is just not an everyday, regular, average person kind of conversation. It is out on a leading edge of consciousness, pushing the limits of what we're capable of being if we really honor love, light, and leadership, which is the truth of who we really are. And the invitation I present to you in every conversation is how can you be, expand, and do more there? And so if you're called to this kind of conversation, it's not because you're meant to be the one who props up everyone in your group. It's because you're the one who's meant to show them all what's possible. And so at this time, you may find, especially as Pluto moves into Aquarius, Aquarius deals with friendships. Again, there's a conversation about groups here, that there's like a changing of the guard and the group you roll with, and a changing of the guard with the people you're attached to. And that's with function. It's with purpose. It's because there's a thing that you're meant to show people, a trail that you're meant to blaze. You're meant to be out front with your machete hacking through the jungle, carving a path for other people, not behind and picking up behind people and come on, you can do it, dragging them. No, that's not it. So I honor you if you're in that place of real recognition with that at this time and you're really understanding like, okay, yeah, I do have to stop letting people talk to me and see me in this more limited fashion that is who I used to be because that's not who I am anymore. I need to, I can't just be available willy-nilly, you know, to my family 
anymore when there's all chaos breaks out because they're not being accountable for themselves, right? I can't just drop everything because my friend's in crises. His friend's always in crises. They're, he's never not out of crises. When are you going to let their crises be their breakthrough? And so some of this is this kind of like tough love, tough lessons as we close out the old and all of the people who were part of holding and locking in our old systems and identities in place. There's a changing of some of the people and the scenery as well. And you don't have to necessarily, you know, cut people out, but you may need to renegotiate the ways in which you talk to people, set some new boundaries, that Saturn bringing in the boundaries, bringing in the spiritual truth that can't be negotiated around or lied about there in Pisces, speaking to both divine counterparts at this time. Okay. There's a lot of power coursing through the divine counterpart fields as Pluto and Saturn are very prominently in conversation with both counterparts really propping them up and pushing them out in front of the pack at this time. Now, this is the way it's supposed to be, right? If you signed up for this, <laughs> ah, you're in good company and simultaneously, yeah, you do get pushed to the front of the line. Bust a move. This is it. This is your time. And this is your moment. You've got a lot of planetary support for carving out new, um, trying new things, being new and different. Lots of planetary support for that at this time. There's movement toward leadership in the world of form for both. It's going to require some discipline and some follow through. Um, but they're both coming through the Taurus energy. She made it through Taurus first, and now she's out in Gemini. He's jumping into Taurus now and going to remain here for the rest of the year. That Taurian energy was an activation around clarity about what we want, what we desire, what we're drawn to, what we can nourish and where we can grow. It's showing us, okay, here's where fertile ground is. Here's people I can actually work with, lead, guide, teach. Here's the people who are ready to move. And these other people, they'll get there when they get there. And so there's a bit of some of, there's a bittersweetness to some of that in our soul families and our families right now. And there's also a real like rising to the occasion that's being called for at this time. Okay. Uh, it's definitely time for an upgrade. <laughs> it's a season of upgrades and really taking control back from fear. And fear of being visible, fear of being seen, fear of stepping up. There's a real taking control back from those fears. So thrilling and exciting. Uh, I hope you join me this Saturday for the conversation about manifestation and your manifestation blueprint and how to find it in your chart. You want to join me on Saturday, May 6th. Uh, you can get a free copy of your chart from my website. You can also Get a free copy of your chart from astro.com and many other places on the internet. Just Google free birth chart and put in your information. Come with a copy of your chart and I'll show you how to manifest what you want, when you want, all year long. I'm really excited about this. I hope you are too. Thank you for liking, watching, subscribing, and sharing. It will be free. It will remain on YouTube. And I'll see you then. Take great care and bye for now.